Welcome back to the studio. Thanks so much, Lily, for coming. Hi, Phoebe. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> I'm extremely well. Do you know Mike? Since you guys might be from the same place. Ah, oh. no. First time. Um, nice to meet you, Michael. And where are you from? Hi. Nice to meet you, too. But uh, that accent, do you come from Sydney? I do, yeah. I'm an Aussie through and through. All right. Well, I, I, I happen to have lived there for uh, nine years. Wow. <laughs> so, so, Lily, why don't you share with us, you know, how you set goals for yourself? Having goals is really important. It helps you focus your resources and modern life's really busy. And so you need to really use your time strategically. Um, and for me, oh, what are my goals? That's a really big question. Uh, I guess I'm a mummy, mm. so raising um, happy mm. and healthy kids is obviously um, a really important life goal for me. Ciao, <laughs> <laughs> um, And I've also got some pretty serious travel goals, so um, I, I just love experiencing other cultures. And my little sister was in Cuba not that long ago. Her stories and photos have really inspired me to, to travel to South America one day, so that's on the bucket list there, yeah. Talking about goals, right? I do know there's a group of students in Hanoi mm -hmm. who go to the diplomatic Academy of Vietnam and mm. they, they have a lot of goals for themselves and actually some of them are getting together to um, to be speaking a, a little bit about the IELTS and also to be speaking about some of their own goals. You guys want to check it out? Yeah, exciting stuff. All right. Sure. <laughs> All right guys, we have the next section which is IELTS on the go and with our host Dr. Chen Tung Tung, where are you? Hello everyone, hello Michael, Phoebe and Lily. Today I am here in Hanoi, more specifically on one of the most iconic streets, Chua Lang. Now this place is known for its incredibly high concentration of top universities. And here I am in front of one of them, DAV, the Diplomatic Academy of Vietnam. Now, DAV is the birthplace of thousands of attaches, ambassadors and diplomats, you know, people whose jobs to help Vietnam maintain a healthy relationship with our neighbors and allies. So DAV is a pretty big deal. Personally, for me, it feels good to be in a campus and feeling like a college student all over again. Here I am with four uh, really good looking students and, and we just going to get to know them, okay? And, can you introduce about yourself a little bit? Okay, so hi, I'm Khanh, I'm 20 years old. Uh, very nice to meet you. I'm Fulham, I'm a third year student. Yes, my name is Ling and we are classmates. I'm Uyen, I'm also a student at the DAB. Um, so, uh, given the nature of your major and your profession, um, your English must be really, really good. So, so prior to entering um, DAV, how was your English? So, well, honestly, I was major uh, in social science, uh, you have to study subjects like math, English, and literature. So English was required in my school curriculum. I have to admit that English has always been my cup of tea. So I spend quite a lot of my quality time uh, learning and practicing English. So I'm quite confident. I've studied only uh, science, natural science in my high school. But, so I decided to ignore learning English as a part time. But uh, when I went to university, uh, English is a, is a compulsory uh, subject, so it's, it's quite difficult for me. So I felt like a uh, little bit nervous about it. So, you know, it sounds like a difficult transition, and, and do you think it is kind of overwhelming? About the environment in DAV, uh, I, think, I think it's a good environment for learning English. Uh, I think uh, DAV have has been a lot to learn English. Uh, when I uh, enter DAV, I have no skill in English, so, but now um, I learn a lot yes, from DAV. According to you know, my understanding, uh, DAV majors uh, have to uh, read news and watch news you know, in English. How do you think about that practice? Uh, me? Um, so I think um, because it's a mandatory uh, subject at school, so it's essential that we have to uh, catch up with the news so in order to do uh, assignments. Uh, but then uh, when uh, I get used to it, I think this is a quite useful habit because it helps us to uh, practice English and uh, enhance other language skills such as uh, writing or reading. 
And I quite agree with her. I mean, at first it was required, but in the end, you know, that's a pretty good source for information so that I can stay informed and updated. So that's why I keep on you know, keeping this habit. So as you can see, all of our future diplomats here are really, you know, grounded in, in, and fluent in English. Uh, but, you know, fluency is one thing, but confidence is another. Uh, and confidence is key in the exam room if you want to ace the IELTS test. Now, uh, last season, uh, we had a feature uh, called Voice of the Week, uh, in which uh, contestants from all parts of the country submitted a video of themselves answering, you know, an IELTS speaking question, and it was an absolute hit. Uh, this season, we'll bring the exam room to you, all right? So we'll go to each school and select a candidate to sit a real time exam with an examiner that we have on set. All right, so I, I want to know among the four of you here, who is the most confident? Well, I think I am. That's confidence right there. That's what I'm talking about. Rising up to the challenge. Okay, so uh, Wynn is going to uh, take a real time uh, IELTS speaking test with an examiner that we have on set. So are you ready? I'm definitely ready. Okay, so uh, let's get to it. Let's, let's take her to the exam room. Yes, wish her luck. So Lily, you ready for some face-off? Yes, I am. This beautiful girl, Wu Feng Win, was chosen to be Voice of the Week. Surely you guys are all excited to check out her performance in the simulated IELTS speaking test. And next, how can you handle the writing task one with too many figures? Our IELTS experts will have all the answers for you. The best part of IELTS Face Off comes to you right now.